We're on the trail in Arizona, two hours north of Phoenix, exploring a maze of granite boulders. Our guide is Cody Lundeen, a nationally known survival expert. Also with us, wilderness instructor Jay Beal, who prefers modern methods of survival. Cody, though, walks barefoot, like the early survivors who lived here, the Yavapai Indians. The Yavapai has pretty much ruled central Arizona. And you're in central Arizona, so they would have been, this would have been one of their hideouts around here. And to survive here, you could do as those Indians did. They relied on wild plants. This stalk, it shoots up. When it was younger, it was edible. You'd have to bake it. And when it matures, here's an old stalk right here. I can cut it down and I can make fire with it. This is all you need to get that fire started. A small magnifying glass. So I want to move this magnifying glass however it needs to be moved to get a full circle, and then I want to back it off and get it as small as possible. Fire in the hole. And that's fire with sunshine. That simple spark could be enough to save your life. Don't be fooled by what you hear elsewhere. Survival is a struggle that joins people, not divides them. We're a tribe. We've been out for a few days, and we're not helping each other. We're not going to get done what we need to get done. If we need to get out of a bad situation, a survival situation, um, everybody's got to work together. Oh, home sweet home. Teamwork, for example, is needed to build a shelter like this one. I think that's Beautiful insane. litter. Plenty of room. But out here in the back country, it doesn't always come together so neatly. Right Lynn Bleeker is a ranger at the nearby Prescott National Forest. She says if you get lost in the woods without basic survival skills, panic and fear can overwhelm you. And people, if they are lost, they'll have a tendency for some reason when you panic and you get warmed up, then they start shedding their clothes. And then you develop hypothermia where you lose body heat. I liked it there real well. Park volunteer Robert Welton has seen it happen. High in the mountains, people going unprepared, many without enough water. They just feel that, you know, I don't need that. And that's their first and last mistake. If you do make a mistake, like getting lost or hurt, then be prepared to call for help. But out here, a cell phone is not reliable. You might have to use a signal mirror. How far will this signal? How far does it It's been found up to 100 miles away or more. Okay, but typically 30 to 40 miles in arid climates where there's lot, not a lot of uh, haze in the sky. With the explosive growth of outdoor recreation and adventure vacations, all kinds of people are heading into the backcountry, some better prepared than others. Cody's advice? Bring water and the right clothing wherever you go. Whether it's in the desert, the Red Rock Canyons, or the high country, be prepared to do whatever it takes to survive. Dying is not a game. You know, in a survival situation by nature, if you don't get your family or your loved ones and yourself out of it, you're going to die. That's not, that's not fun, that's, but that's the reality of dying of hypothermia, hyperthermia, or whatever, because Mother Nature rules. She's the boss. She has more variables than you can shake a stick at, and she's the boss. For Cody and the rest of us, those are words to live by as we make our way back to civilization. In Prescott, Arizona, Jim Otte, New Center 7.